Welcome everyone to Gamer Milk. Today, Old Rising gets a new feature, Cyberpunk 2077 getting refunds, Nvidia's already hard at work on supercards, Intel is having major issues with their 10 nanometer and 7 nanometer process, but we finally get to see Intel's first desktop XE discrete GPU. And a thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, it's news time man, first up for today, I have an update to a recent story I did. In it, reports had surfaced that any Ryzen CPUs older than AMD's 5000 series wouldn't support the new smart access memory feature due to a lack of PDEP instruction set. Well, it looks like that isn't the case, as we're seeing bar support being shown on not only Ryzen 3000 CPUs, but even as far back as first gen Ryzen. Anatech's editor also confirmed from AMD that bar support does not rely on PDEP instructions, which is obviously great because we may start seeing support for much older Ryzen CPUs. Of course, it still requires an RX 6000 GPU for now, if only we could actually buy one. But first, you can build your very own website without any coding with today's sponsor, Squarespace, the online tool that makes it easier than ever to build your own website. And it's not just easy, but the templates are fast and they look great. Which is why I built GamerMail.com using Squarespace long before they approached me to be a sponsor. Not only that, but Squarespace has everything you need to make your site a success. I'm talking e-commerce tools for an online store, easy to understand search engine optimization, email marketing, and so much more. I can personally attest to how easy it is. So don't wait. Head to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use squarespace.com slash gamermeld to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Next up for today, if you're one of the many gamers who were disappointed in the Cyberpunk 2077 launch, specifically the numerous bugs and poor performance on console, I've got some good news. It looks like both Sony and Microsoft are issuing refunds for digital copies to those who request it, with Sony going as far as actually removing Cyberpunk 2077 from their online store. Since all of this happened, CD Projekt Red did issue a statement on Twitter basically promising to work on the game, but for those who don't want to wait, can get their purchase refunded. Obviously, that's really just good news for everyone. Next up, while Nvidia's RTX 3000 GPUs are still pretty much impossible to find, Nvidia could be working on their next generation supercards. The story was originally published in the Korea Economic Daily, and you can see that Nvidia is once again using Samsung's 8 nanometer process. Now, it doesn't specifically state that it's their 3000 Super Series or whatever next gen will be called, but it does say next gen 30 series. If it isn't the supercards, this could be a way to secure more batches of GPUs. Possibly, Nvidia is really upping production heavily. Either way, the company probably doesn't have much choice given TSMC seems to have more than they can currently handle. As the outlet writes, Nvidia favored Samsung thanks to how quickly they're able to deliver chips, so hopefully Nvidia is confident that Samsung can do better moving forward. Next up for today, it looks like Intel is still having major issues with both their 10 and 7 nanometer processes. During a conference call with the investment technology firm Susquehanna, semi-accurate's Charlie Demersion shed some light on the terrible place Intel is in. The discussion was summarized by a user on Reddit, so let's go over a few points. For starters, Charlie still doesn't think that Intel's 10 nanometer process is viable. Luckily, their new 10 nanometer Superfin has much better yields, but apparently still not as good as 14 nanometers. Of course, it's the yield rates as to why we still haven't seen 10 nanometer desktop CPUs, and that's apparently why Intel's Ice Lake server chips have been delayed, to which he claims they've actually been delayed again until Q2 or Q3 of next year. He does claim that their next-gen Sapphire Rapids architecture is looking good for 2022. But this brings us to the major issue Intel is facing. If this is true, Ice Lake will likely be facing AMD's Milan, which is the successor to AMD's Rome. Yet, Rome already looks to beat Ice Lake. And the same can likely be said about Sapphire Rapids. Plus, their 7 nanometers looks to be delayed far later than 6 to 12 months. Basically, Intel is already looking to lose to AMD if they keep rolling their products out on time, but they aren't on time. They're getting pushed back more and more. Oh, and he also mentioned next-gen desktop Rocket Lake being a power hog, which we recently saw with some leaked specs. 
Let's just hope we don't have to wait until 2023 before seeing a 10 nanometer desktop CPU. Basically, things are not looking good for Intel's CPU division. Then again, it isn't all bad for Intel with today's final story. In it, we have a really important benchmark that was found and shared by Tom Apisak. As you can see, it comes from Geekbench, and it's a benchmark of a discrete Intel GPU with 128 EUs. Now, there's a couple reasons this is such a big deal. For one, because all low-power-based GPUs have so far come with a maximum of 96 EUs. Since this has more, it could be the first XE HPG GPU, meaning it's actually made for gamers, albeit a very low-end model. Of course, it may still be a low-power GPU since I don't think Intel has disclosed that the architecture is capped at 96 EUs. But that actually brings me to the biggest reason. As you can see, the name is Intel Gen 12 Desktop Graphics Controller. Not only that, but in another benchmark of the same GPU shared by Tom Apisak, it clearly states that it's on the desktop platform. That means we're looking at one of the first discrete XE desktop GPUs. Of course, at 1.4 GHz and only 128 EUs, it really isn't very powerful at all. But given it has more cores than the Iris XE Max, and that handles games fairly well, it could be great for things like internet cafes or very entry-level PCs. And that's actually interesting because we really haven't seen much competition there in quite a while. When it comes to the performance in Geekbench, Intel's GPU does quite poorly, but given the Iris XE Max even beats it, clearly this is a very early engineering sample. All in all, while it ultimately looks like Intel won't be releasing a gaming GPU this year like they said, it doesn't look like we'll have to wait too much longer. As always, time will tell. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming discrete GPUs or are you just ready to buy one of AMD or Nvidia's cards? And if you liked the video, please subscribe. We're actually nearing 200,000 subscribers, it's almost unbelievable. And as always, have a great day!